Dat hy, daar is ons terug, en geloof het of nie, Kleitense Gogas is uitgesoord. Ja, nie Kleit wel, nie Kleitin, die, die, die elektronische Gogas wat ons het. Kleitin, welcome back, just to pick up where we, the conversation sort of started when we had a radio interview, not a TV interview with you previously. Uh, um, Arends Vlei, tell us about Arends Vlei. As dit jou eerste taal is om Engels te praat, dan um, is dit seker nogal moeilik om die Afrikaans te bemeester op stel, nee? Um, not, it's not too bad because I do, there is help on set for, to, to help with the dialogue, to just to make sure that I, what I'm saying, I'm saying correctly. Um, I do come from a home where everyone does speak Afrikaans. It's just my folks sent me to an English school and yeah. I spoke English all my life. So that's always I understand it better than what I actually speak it. But when I'm on set, um, there's definitely help behind the scenes, not just for myself, but for everybody with regards to the language, because Cape Town is such a, um, you know, like we have the Kumbes Afrikaans and, and all that, so everyone has their own ways of speaking, yeah, so yeah. that we have someone on set to assist with that. Clayton, I would like to know where did this love for the toneel spell begin? Uh, at school, grade 10, I did a play called Who Killed Jimmy Valentine? Um, we maybe had 15 people in the audience that did not do well ticket wise, but, um, yeah, that's, that's where it started. And then once I left school, I just immediately went to study. Jy het, uh, as kind, het jy groot geword, sê jy, en ek het een bykie gelees in een artikel in een tijdskrif, het jy baie by jou oma groot geword, en sy het, sy het, sy het een leidende rol in jou leven gespeel. Um, daar is een groot deel van die Zuid-Afrikaanse bevolking, nee, waar mense, wel mense groot word by hulle oma's, of by hulle, by hulle, by hulle, by hulle groot ouwers, en dit speel een baie groot rol in een klomp mense, van, 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 in een klomp van onze levens. Um, denk jy, daar word genoeg aandag gegee, aan mense, aan die kwestie, dat mense saam met hulle groot ouwers groot word? Do you think that in South Africa, it is such a thing, that it, there has to be more focus on that? Yeah, look, my, my grandma played a big, big role in, in my life and me going into this industry because she was there before any of the TV stuff happened. You know, she was yeah. in the in the audience at the school performances when there were 15 people <laughs> in there with the entire church group. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so and you know she she raised me. She she's the one who who's who taking me to church and and being my mother and my dad because my folks weren't filling the role. At the time, she had to to take that all over, and you can, you're absolutely right. There is a large amount of people who are being raised by either their grandparent or their grandparents, mm. um, where they 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 fulfil that mother and father role, and it definitely needs to be more stories or, or light shit on that because they it's it's basically double duty, right? Yep. You kind of think that the 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 grandmother's done her role as raising her kids, but where her kids maybe fail, they have to kind of pick up the slack wow. and go again. Yeah. So, yeah. Clayton, the other thing you often speak about, or I've seen that you've spoken about before, is mental health issues. And you mentioned that you also struggled with some depression at a stage. Do you think yeah. that is also something that we need to start speaking more openly about? So, big belief in it. There's, there's I think, especially with men, there's this um, idea that if you speak about what you're struggling with, it's 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 seen as weak, um, and it, it's definitely not. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's uh, we, men should feel free to to express themselves. I I'm in a WhatsApp group with a friend and my cousin. It's just the three of us, and in that group we speak about um, what what we're struggling with. We do joke around a lot. Don't get me wrong, but there are definitely days that you struggle with that where, where you just hit up the boys in the group and go, man, I'm really struggling this week with this. And um, it's a comfortable space to be vulnerable. And I think more guys need to understand that there's no weakness in being vulnerable. It's okay to say, I'm struggling. I'm not coping with A, B, and C. Um, and I think if we can, again, shed more light on that and let men feel comfortable and relaxed enough to speak about it, it will at least contribute to, to taking the steps forward in, in helping men deal with, with mental health. Clayton, jy, jy is nou bykie van een TV-ster, mens moet het nou maar herken, nie. Um, jy is famous, jy kan tien tien in die kaap, loop sonder dat mense jou kan val en, en om jou hals val en soen en druk en tekeer gaan nie. 
Tell me, how does, how does for the average people out there, the Jan Rapp and his maat on the straat, how does it work? I mean, jy is a ster, nee? How does the system work at Arends Vlei? Werk jy heel dag? Do you need to do new scenes every now and then? Tell us how, how does it, how does a behind the scenes look at Arends Vlei? So it's, it's just, it's all dependent on your storyline, how, how long your storyline is, is running. Uh -huh. Sometimes you could be you could be on set for maybe a month and a a month and a half, and then they'll only need you again in two months' time. But if you have a long storyline, you could be in there for a relatively long long period of time. Um, you have someone like Jolie Martin, who's obviously the lead and and who spearheads the show from the from the front. I mean, she's there just about every day doing these long monologues when she has to stand on the on the stage in the school hall and, and deliver these these speeches. I don't know how she does it. She's amazing. Sure. But um but yeah it's just it's all storyline dependent. Clayton, jij hebt gezegd dat jouw auditie eigenlijk niet voor lekker gevoel heeft die auditie gedaan heeft niet. Tell us about that story. <laughs> so the big okay wait I gotta set it up first. So <laughs> I got the role during COVID, that, that initial main lockdown that we had. Yes. And I was isolating by myself in my apartment. And I decided it was a good idea to learn how to bake. <laughs> so I started baking. But the problem was, I was the only one who could who could eat the stuff I was baking. <laughs> so I put on <laughs> all these pounds, Dad, all these kilos. And then I get the Iron Slave brief and it says, Jake is ripped. And I was like... <laughs> You're gonna get something. Uh, it's not ripped, but you're gonna get something. And then, and then on top of it, I go to the audition. I know the other actor is sitting there. I mean, this guy's an eight pack. So now I'm like, okay, if they're going with this whole ripped thing, if they're really serious about it, I'm done. Like I'm out of this. Um, and then I did the audition. And then in in an audition, you have to kind of introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Clayton Everton. Uh, my agent is so and so, and I'm reading for the mm -hmm. role of Jake. I said the wrong character name when I did my introduction <laughs> because I had done an audition, a self tape the day before. So wow. I kept saying the character from the day before. <laughs> <laughs> and in the audition room, they're like, no, you're here for Jake. I'm like, no, 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 it's Ricardo. They're like, no, it's, it's Jake. And there's just nice. mass confusion. <laughs> it was, yeah. Clayton, uh, on Instagram, you have a couple of photos because we've obviously on troll you, eh? Uh, <laughs> op Instagram is daar een paar foto's. Een van de heet jij, uh, is, een beetje, is dat een beetje box? En is jij een fan van box? Uh, I've always been a fan of combat sports. So ah. MMA, um, you know, all the UFC stuff, I'm, I'm a huge fan of that. Uh, boxing, I took a bit more seriously when we started filming season four of Islands Play because we went into a whole boxing storyline. And in that picture, I'm standing with uh, Josh Kluter who's an amazing boxing coach. Um, and he, he's the one who taught us how to, how to at least throw a proper jab and how to throw punches and move out the way. And um, yeah, myself and, and DJ, uh, we, had, we had a few good, good sessions in the ring. But I love it. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an amazing sport and it's, it's like chess, really, boxing. It's not just about hitting the other person. It's learning to, to think quick in the moment. Yeah. Um, it's, it's quite fascinating and, and it's great for fitness as well. I would recommend it to anybody who wants to uh, get fit. <laughs> but that's the thing with acting. Huh? People don't realize that, that you need to experience so many aspects of life and you need to, to you, you must so feel farther here to have um, a character to spiel, um, a eerlijk to spiel. Uh, for instance, looking at you, you look like a healthy guy. Uh, what's this thing with cigars? Do you like cigars? <laughs> I absolutely love cigars. Just, I don't. So I don't drink. Um, I don't drink any alcohol at all, and I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't do any of the marijuana stuff or anything like that. Don't but, uh, Yeah. Yeah, but c cigars is something a international director introduced me to. We were just kind of hanging around on set one day, and um, we went to take a walk, and he's like, "You want to smoke a cigar?" And I was like, "Never done it." And then he showed me the whole process of cutting it and lighting ah, a cigar. And did it heal? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, it's uh, and then I kind of just found it's this 
it's a nice relaxing thing after a long week of work to just light up a cigar and just sit outside and 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 reflect on on the week. It's not something I do every day, mm. uh, but, but after a stressful week, then yeah. Your favorite uh, Cuban Dominican? I love a Dominican cigar. Uh, Co uh, Coimbra. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Those, those those are quite quite good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just the money. Obviously, actors are getting paid well. You can afford to <laughs> No, but I haven't bought. I haven't bought like the, the box cigars. You know, like they sell them in box like nine thousand yen for those things. It's yeah. like, okay, I won't go that far. Yeah, 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 but, but, um, Clayton, <laughs> we, we've run out of time, and there's so many things we still want to chat about. It was lovely talking to you today, and thank you very much for your insight. Just a quick uh, thing, uh, just before we go, is there iets waarmee jy nou bezig is om te werk wat jy mag praat oor? Um, yeah, I'm going to be jumping on a Gambit Films production that's filming for uh, Netflix South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Unseen. Uh, really looking forward to that. It's going to be fascinating. And then I'll be jumping onto another production in August called Spinners. Nou, maar baie sterk te daar voor Kleitenhoos in NNA om jou in die skerm te sien. Muziek